Chapter 19 of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sarah and Gracia Partial. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter 19 The Lost is Found. Catherine crossed to one window and drew up the shade. It was late afternoon and almost dusk on that north side of the house. The dim light revealed on the pillow a face so still and white that Bob's was sure only death could make it so. For one long moment she gazed before she recognized the girl lying on the bed, and no wonder, for great was the change in her. "'Gwen! It's our own sister! Gwen!' she cried, as one who can scarcely believe the evidence of her senses. Down by the bedside, Roberta knelt and took one of the lifeless white hands in her own. "'Oh, Gwen!' she implored. "'You believed that in all the world there was no one who loved you, no home in which you were welcome. Oh, how selfish I've been. Gwen, forgive me, sister. I should have tried to help you. I was the one, really, who was selfish, for I wanted adventure. I didn't try to think what it would mean to you. But, oh, I will, I will, Gwen, if only you will live. Why don't you open your eyes, Gwen? Then, as there was no response from the apparently lifeless form on the bed, Bobs looked up at her friend as she implored, Catherine, why doesn't Gwen open her eyes? Are we too late? Oh, don't say that we are. It will kill Glow. She thinks that it is her fault that Gwen left. She feels that she turned one of Mother's own daughters out of our home. Catherine, who had been hunting about the room as though in search of something, as indeed she had been, gave an exclamation of relief and going to Bobs. She held out a small vial. Gwen isn't dead, she said. It wasn't poison that she took, just a heavy dose of sleeping powder. However, she will probably continue in this death-like sleep for hours. Yet she may soon recover. We have no time for delay. I will remain here while you go to the corner drugstore and telephone to my hospital for an ambulance. Just say that it is for Miss Delaney and they will respond at once. While she is unable to protest, we will take her to your home. Bob's had arisen, but lovingly she stooped and kissed the white face that was so unlike the proud, beautiful one she had last seen on that never-to-be-forgotten day when they had planned leaving their Long Island home. Tears fell unheeded as Roberta whispered to ears that could not hear. And when you waken, sister dear, you will be in a home that wants you, and our Gloria, who has tried to be mother to us all these years, will be at your side smiling down, and a new life will begin for you and for us all. Then, almost blinded by her tears, Roberta descended the long, dark flight of stairs and telephoned not only to the hospital, but also to Gloria, telling her the wonderful news and bidding her prepare Bob's own room for the sister who was coming home. Two hours later, Gwendolyn, who had not yet awakened, was lying in the comfortable bed in Bob's room. Her three sisters and their friend, Catherine Delaney, stood watching her in the shaded lamplight. The expression on the face of Gloria told more than words could have done what it meant to her to have this one of her dear mother's daughters back home. And a real home it is going to be to her from now on, if patient love can make it so, said Gloria. Then to the nurse she turned, asking, Will it be long before she wakens, Catherine? It ought not to be long, was the reply, which hardly had been given when Roberta whispered eagerly, Glo, I think Gwen moved. The eyes that looked so wearily out at them were about to close as though nothing mattered, when suddenly they were again opened with a brightening expression and yet they did not look quite natural. Holding out her arms toward the oldest sister, the girl on the bed cried eagerly, Mother, I have come to you after all. I took something. I wanted to come. Her voice trailed away, and again she closed her eyes. Gloria was one of the girls who looked most like their mother. 
Dear, dear sister, Glow said, trying not to sob, you are home again. I am sure our mother led us to you. Try to get strong. We will help you, Gwendolyn, for truly we love you. No one knows, little Gwen, how your big sister has wanted you. Can't you try to forgive me for having spoken impatiently, if not for my sake, at least for the sake of our mother? Gwendolyn looked at the face bent close above her, as though trying to recall the past. Then, reaching out a frail hand, she said, I, Glow, am the one who should be forgiven. Then she closed her eyes, and a moment later, Catherine said that she was asleep. But this time it was a natural sleep from great weariness. When she wakens again, give her broth, for I fear she is too nearly starved to take heavier food now. End of chapter 19 the Lost is Found. Recording by Sarah and Gracia Partial. Sarah